Hey everyone, welcome back. In a previous video, I showed you a workflow using a flex context model to swap clothes. Contact is pretty flexible, but that flexibility can make its results a bit unpredictable. Sometimes you have to tweak your prompts to get what you want, and you just can't nail it perfectly every time. Remember that ACE Plus technique I showed you a few months back? In that video, I put the dress from the woman on the left onto the woman on the right. Honestly, ACE Plus works better for swapping clothes than flex contacts does. That old ACE Plus workflow could swap clothes, but it wasn't really built just for that. So today, I'm introducing a specific workflow made for clothes swapping using ACE Plus. You can grab this workflow for free in our community. I'll drop the link in the description below. As we go, I'll also show you how this ACE Plus results compare to what Flux Context gives us. Let's jump in. First, let's tackle something tricky. Here are our two images. I want to take the dress of the woman sitting on the ground and put it on the woman standing up. Their poses are totally different. That's what makes it hard. Let's see if ACE Plus can pull it off. First, let's take a look at the models used in ACE Plus. The key players here are this Subject LoRa and the Redux model from Black Forest Lab. You can find the Subject LoRa on the ACE Plus GitHub page. Its job is to keep a specific subject looking consistent across different things. You might also remember me talking about a model called Flex Redux in another video. Flex Redux uses a newer Seagip model with a higher resolution than the old one. But honestly, it's not as good as the Black Forest Labs Redux model in this case. Why? Because Flex Redux can reference both the style and the composition of the original image, not just the style. But here's the thing, when we are swapping clothes between people in different poses, we don't want to copy the original pose or composition. We just want the clothes style. That makes the Flex Redux model more flexible for this job. Also, just swapping the style isn't enough. Without the subject Laura helping keep things consistent, the results wouldn't look nearly as good. Okay, models explained. Let's head back to group 1. This is the dress we want to transfer. We need to isolate it so it becomes a clean reference image without extra stuff. I've typed dress in a prompt here. If you are swapping a t-shirt or pants, just describe your item here instead. Now let's run this part. Mm. These preview nodes look blank. That's because the preview bridge node blocks everything at first. So we'll need to toggle the block switch. Much better. Now we see all the previews. Oh wait, the bow ribbon on the wrist is missing. Let's try adding bow ribbon to the problem and see if that helps. Still missing? Okay, no problem. We can add it manually using the mask editor inside the preview bridge node. Perfect. Now we have a ball ribbon. Notice we have two versions of the reference image. Both are important. And I'll explain why in a sec. Now let's handle the portrait of the woman getting the new dress. Since we are changing her upbeat, we still need to find her current dress. We are use the segment entity node to auto max it. You could also max it by hand, but automation saves time. Now we have her dress mask, we'll use this for in painting later, but this mask area feels too small. The original dress was loose fitting, but her current dress is form fitting, so we need to expand the skirt area beating the mask. I'm going to paint over her arms too for speed. If you want to keep her exact arm position, you can avoid painting there. I'm also using this node to crop the image, cutting out pixels outside the dress area. This saves VRAM memory. 
Don't worry, we'll put those pixels back later. Awesome. References are ready. Time to activate group 4 and actually swap the clothes. Let's look at the outputs. Great, she's wearing a new dress now. There are a few rough spots around the edges where we painted. But we'll fix those in the next group. First, let's look at what group 4 did. In this preview, you can see the original dress image and our portrait stitched together. If you saw my earlier ACE Plus video, you know this is a standard trick. It helps keep the dress looking consistent. This image switch node lets you pick which reference image to use. Both options come from group 1. One is just a dress, and the other is a dress on a person. For this task, I pick the one with a person as a reference. But sometimes, picking just a dress works better. For example, look at this other test image. I used the dress past person reference again. But check off her hip. She's got toes appearing there. That's weird, right? It happened because the reference image included the original model's feet. That's why it's important to segment the dress cleanly, removing the original body info. Generally, using just the dress itself is a better reference. Why? Because the subject Laura model was mostly trained on images of clothes by themselves, without people wearing them. This is a big difference from how flux context works. With flux context, you really want the person in the reference image. Let's see some side-by-side -side comparison. The left image is ACE+, the right is flux context. Both use this reference image. See how it's just a dress laying flat? It looks flat, two-dimensional. It's really tough for flat context to turn that flat image into a 3D dress on a person. ACE Plus handles is much better. Even when the reference image has a person, flat context can still struggle, especially with white or black clothes. Look at this black lace dress example. We try to swap it onto someone else. See how flat context just couldn't keep the lace pattern consistent. Let me show you a few more comparisons. Okay, I hope you see the difference between AC Plus and Flux Context now. Back to Comfy UI. This note here is for your prompt. I left it blank. Most of the time, you won't need to put words here unless the output looks wrong. But if you were using flash context for close swapping, you'd almost always need at least one word here, like dress. And if details are missing, you'd have to add more descriptive words too. So just from this, ACA Plus is definitely easier to use for close swapping. This note speeds up the image generation. It's part of the wave speed notepad. Compared to Tcash, it gives you a speed boost with less impact on image quality. Quick note, you might not find wave speed in account viewer manager. If not, you'll need to install it manually using some command line code. Anyway, we still have those rough edges on our swap draft. Let's clean those up in the next group. First, I'll mute the key sampler here. We need to impend those problem areas. But we need a mask first. This white line shows the area we are in paint. It covers the messy edge. If it misses any spot, we can add them manually in the preview bridge node later. Let's just run the case damper and see what happens. Okay, got the output. Her cap looks a bit off. Let me check elsewhere. Now, I'll add that care area to the mask using Preview Bridge. Alright, run again.
Much better. The cap issue is fixed. Let's look at this group quickly. This node controls how wide and blurry the painting mask is. Instead of using a fill model, we can choose a flux model here for better blending. And here's our final output. Remember we cropped the image earlier? This node seamlessly restored the full picture, putting those cropped pixels back. Hope this workflow helps you out. If you want to try it yourself or chat with others about close swapping, come join our community. Link is in the description below. See you in the next video.